חודש טוב, uh, ברוך השם, we're in חודש אלול, and a very very special month, and as usual, as we do once a month, we want to talk about the power of אלול, of the month. And of course, Elul is famous of being the month of tshuva, the month of repentance, the month of getting my act together. That's what we associate the month with. And the energy of the month is the energy of tshuva, the energy of the month is to, to, to of energy of a change. So, you know, before Pesach, the energy is that, oh, I gotta, I gotta clean everything. And the energy is like, let me be organized of uh, cleaning everything. So Elul has an energy of change, of renew, renewing something. Now, what is this concept of tshuva? It's not necessarily of repenting for the, the sins that I did. Rather, the word tshuva in Hebrew comes from the root lashuv. Lashuv is to return. And where do I need to return? I need to return to myself. Because sometimes I let myself go in such a way that the, the time takes me to a place that I'm, I'm drifting away from myself. And it, I need to come back to myself. What is myself is to my truth. And many people try to avoid the, the, the truth trying to avoid the reality. And what's, what does it mean to avoid the reality? They're not happy with the reality. They're, uh, they're depressed, they're sad, they're not happy with, with the state where they're in right now, so they try to move away from the reality. And moving away from the reality in many different ways. And the reality is that everybody at some point in their life they're not happy with where they are. Sometimes you're very happy with where you are. Sometimes you're not happy with where you are. Physically, emotionally, mentally. And that's the time that we have to come back to our own truth. And Elul, the root of the month of Elul, is to come back to my own truth. Is to dig down inside to find out what is my, what is my truth and, and to to point it out and to, to bring it out and to circle around to come to my truth. Now, this is also considered the month of tshuva, but we also call it the month of tikkun. Tikkun is to fix. When something's broken, you fix it. So doing tshuva is to repent, or now how we said now, to return. But we also call it the month of Tikkun, the month of fixing. The word Tikkun, the way you write it, has the same letters of the word Tinok. Tinok is a baby. Rabbi Nachman von Breslev says that the, since the same letters of Tikkun are the same letters of Tinok, what is Tinok? Tinok is a baby and that means something that is new, something that was just born. When a baby is born, He's like a brand new factory made. There's no blemishes. He never said a lie. He never cheated. He didn't do any sin. It's pure. A baby is completely, completely pure. It takes months before, before he starts being chas v'shalom, uh, 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 getting dirty by this world. Ooh, till he will say a lie will take two years till he starts talking until he will still talk another two, three years, until that baby will start uh, getting affected by this world, takes a long time. So the, the concept of tikkun is not only to fix, rather is to bring myself back to the beginning, to the level of a tinok. Now, every month, if you remember, we mentioned that in a couple classes, every month has a different combinations of the word, of the name of Hashem, Yud Kei Vav Kei. So first of all, there are 12 months, so there are 12 combinations of how you can write Yud Kei Vav Kei. If you remember in the previous classes, we, we, we talked about it. 
which then also I mentioned that since we have 24 hours a day, there are 24 combinations of the name Yud Kei Vav Kei. Since the day is divided in half, half day is the, the called the day and half day is called night. So in each part of the day, there are different types of combinations. It's called Tzirufei Otiyot. And each hour of the day, there's a different energy. Same thing in the month. Every month is carrying a different energy, a different way how we can write the letters of Yud Kei, Vav Kei in the name of Hashem. So the combination in the month of Elul is He, then another He, then Vav, and then a Yud. And the Bnei Sachar, which uh, is a, a very interesting teachings of Kabbalah, he says if you take the Sofei Otiyot, the ends of the, of the letter, the, when you want to calculate Gimatria, or when you want to find hints, if you remember last week we spoke about the month of Elul, and we said that in the word Elul, the word Elul itself is an acronym of many different uh, uh, verses. We mentioned one of them is Anile Dudi Vedodili, and we mentioned Umal Hashem et Levavcha et Levav Zaracha. We mentioned a few different uh, verses that the acronym of Elul is coming, is, is hinting in these verses. We also mentioned, if you remember last week when we talked about Elul, is that the Sofeot Yod, the last letter of each word in the word, in the verse, Anile Dudi Vedodili, it all, each word ends with the letter Yud, which brought us to, the, to, to, to see that Anile Dodi Vedodili has four Yuds, which brought us to the numerical value of 40, 10 times 4. So if I want to look at a hint in the combination of Hey, Hey, Vav, and Yud, so there is a Pasuk, Utsdaka Tiyer Lanu Ki. This comes from uh, the book of Bereshit. The Sofeot Yod, the last letters, Utsdaka, Tihiye, Lanu, Ki, is this He, and then He, and then Vav, and then Yud, as the Sofeot Yod. But if you take, which already means, what does it mean, Utsdaka, Tihiye, Lanu, when charity will be, or kindness will be to us, because it has the word Ki, if you take off the last letter of each one of these words, then you can read it, Utsedek tiye lecha kaf. Not lecha, sorry, lan, lamednun, kaf. Which, the, if you put this together, these four words, I mean, the last two are not really words, because we took off the last letter, but if you put these four words together, it would bring us to a numerical value of 715. 715 is the new, same numerical value of the word betshuva, to do tshuva. So we see that the, the energy of the month is the whole concept of tshuva. The whole concept of returning, the whole concept of rebirth and bringing myself back to factory mode. You know now in today's technology it's very easy to learn about about Hashem through technology. You have in almost in any electronic device, especially in cell phones, that you can reset the device to factory mode. Because you change the settings and you can, uh, in one button, whoop, you reset everything to the mode how it came from the factory. So the energy of the month of Elul is this uh, factory reset mode. That I can actually achieve this level of tshuva, this level of tikkun, to bring myself back to my original state like a baby, like a tinok. Now, we know based on the teachings of the Book of Formation, Sefer Yetzirah, which we attribute this book to Avram Avinu. Some say that it was actually, it can be attributed to Adam Arishon. Either way, they're both right because Adam Arishon got the information, who passed it down to to his son, and to Shet, and to Noach, and till it came to Avraham Avinu, and Avraham Avinu put it together. But the Book of Formation, which is the first book of Kabbalah, explains that the world 
is, so to say, functioning on 22 frequencies. That these frequencies are the foundation of the world. One can call it 22 frequencies, one can call it 22 letters. So in the alphabet of Lashon Kodesh, there are 22 otiyot. Each letter is a frequency, or better to say, a channel. Through that channel, a certain energy can be brought down to the world. And we mentioned many times that Hashem created the world with these letters. The analogy that I always give is like a programmer. And again, taking back the analogy of technology can teach me a lot about Hashem. And if you take the concept of programming, today we are, we are dependent and we are surrounded by different types of software and hardware and applications, everything around me. If it's in my computer, the, the whole computer is, is working on hardware and software. On my cell phone, I, 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 I only function through applications. I go into the car, I have a GPS, this is a software. Everything that I use, almost any little thing that I use has in it software or hardware. And uh, my entire life, I'm surrounded and I cannot even function now without these softwares. So this is very close to home. If you take a software, how do you develop it? You develop it with code. If a person is a programmer, he knows how to sit on the computer, write the code, that if you're not a programmer, the code doesn't even make sense. If I'm going to write now a letter in English, then you all understand it because you know the ABC and you know the combinations of the ABC. And you know that if I put a combination of four letters in a certain order, which will form a certain word. If you would take this letter and you take it to China or any other country that they don't know English, they would look at it and it would just look to them like weird symbols. They, they in the first glance, won't even be able to copy the symbols. Take it the other way around. For us, English is very familiar and most of the world people read English. Try to read now Chinese letters. You, you know, it will take you months before you can actually copy the letters. So, English is a pretty universal uh, 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 language that almost in any other languages, the, the, even the symbols, the letters are similar. But just to make the analogy, go now to China, try to read something, you can't read anything. But they're also using combinations of letters or symbols and they put it together and it creates a language. Same thing with the computer code, that a programmer sits down and writes a code that if you don't know the language, it doesn't make sense, just a bunch of symbols. But for the programmer, programmer makes a lot of sense. If you take the, the, the combination of four or five letters and it forms a word in English or any other language, same thing, the programmer will take a few symbols, put them together and it will create some type of a, not a word, but some type of a combination. And this will form the software, and again, a programmer can look at the program and say, oh, this line, this combination of code will create this function. And if it's a design of the website, so this line will make this button look blue. And this line will make this uh, part of the, the design look like this and like that. So the same idea, if you go down to the depth of the idea of the programming, that's how Hashem creates the world takes 22 symbols and he puts them together in different combinations. One combination will mean this thing. One combination will mean that thing. If I change the combination, it will mean a completely different thing. Now, when I take these letters and I put them together in a different form, then it will create a different energy. When we were kids, we had a game that we would take two different colors and mix them. And I would take, for example, white and red, and I will mix them together, suddenly I have pink. And I will take uh, green and purple, suddenly I will have a, a dark blue. And we will make different combinations to see what colors you can create with which combination. And we did that also with, uh, with markers in water. That we would take a, a, something like this of, of water, like a cup, and put three, four types of markers in it and it will create these different forms. And you see how there's infinite amount of shades. So
So the same idea, that's how Hashem creates the world with these frequencies, with these letters, the letters of the holy language, Lashon Kodesh, each one contains in it a certain energy. But when you put them together in different combinations, the energy will change. The book of, of uh, formation, Sefer Yetzirah, explains that every month has different letters that not only create the month, but rather gives the energy of the month. The, and we know that every month has a sign, and every month has a planet. Now everybody's all hyped up with the planets, with the eclipse yesterday, everybody, uh, uh, you know, were focused, millions of people were focused on the eclipse. And somebody sent me a, like a live feed that, uh, that shows the eclipse, and there was like 11 million people on that live feed. Just thinking how mil millions of people were waiting to see Hashem's wonder. Just, uh, just think just of the concept behind it that Hashem changed, so to say, the reality of the world for three seconds. He didn't even change it. He just made it look a little bit different for a couple seconds. Millions of people went online to see that, that miracle, how the moon and the sun, they, they, they meet each other and how it formed. At some point it formed this huge like bubble of light. And on the other side, it formed uh, darkness. It just goes to show you, we talked about before about Mashiach. We get excited because the sun and the moon meet. Just imagine what's going to happen, the live feed, when Mashiach is going to come. Instead of 11 million people on the live feed, it would be 11, you know, maybe 111 million or a million, a billion point one, whatever it is. The point is just to take from that is that Hashem just, moved something in the universe and how we got all excited. So Hashem can move and do whatever He wants. So we know that every month has a letter. And again, to understand the depth of the letter is the little intro that I just gave. The letter, we see it as a letter. Rather it's a form, it's a combination that through that letter comes a certain energy, a certain power. So every month has a sign, and every month has a planet that rules that month. The sign of uh, Elul is Vir Virgo, which you say in Hebrew, Betula. The letter of the sign is the letter Yud. The planet of the month of Elul is the planet... Excuse me? Going too fast. <laughs> I'm waiting for Mashiach. I want to get the class done before Mashiach comes. So we said the, the sign of the month is Virgo. The letter that is controlling the month is the letter Yud. Now the planet of the month is the planet, in Hebrew we call it Kochav. Kochav is a planet. In English we call it Mercury. The, the translation of the word Kochav is a star. But uh, also the translation of the word planet is Kochav. Happens to be that the planet that controls the month of Elul, in English it's called Mercury. But in Hebrew the name is Kochav. I mean we have uh, the planet that is called Shabtai, the planet that is called Maadim, Mars and uh, Jupiter. The, the uh, planet that controls the month of Elul is Mercury. In Hebrew, it's called Kochav. Kochav is also the word of four planets and for the word star. So, but these are the, this is the, the, the star that controls the month. And the, the letter that controls the planet is the letter Reish. So, the letter that controls the month, the sign is Yud. The letter that controls the star that is called Kochav, Mercury, is Reish. The letter you no need to talk too much. This comes from the, the hints to us on the ten Sfirot, and the, that the entire world is built on these Sfirot, what's called emanations. Everything originates from the ten Sfirot. So that in itself comes to show us how, if we know that the entire world, the entire universe, is feeding off the combination of the ten sfirot, the emanations, then that in itself shows us the power of the month 
uh, uh, just by that. But in the word kochav, again, which uh, the, the, I'm not talking right now about the translation of the word star or planet, rather the name of the planet, kochav. If you break the word kochav into two, the first part of the word will be ko, kaf vav, which has the numerical value of 26, which is the exact numerical value of the name Yudke Vavke, the creator of the world, the power of creation. And the last two letters, the second part of the word Kochav, will be Kaf Bet, which corresponds to Kaf Bet Otiot, the 22 letters. The 22 letters, Kaf Bet is 22, the numerical value. So the 22 letters, they represent the creation of the world. And that represents the world below, the, the lower realm. The first part of the name, Koch, Kochav, Kaf Vav, which has the numerical value of 26, represents the higher realm, the power of creation, Yud Kei Vav Kei, which comes to hints to us that that's the month where the Elyonim, the supreme world and the Tachtonim, the lower realm, can be connected together. The power of this planet is to connect Shamayim Va'aretz, the heavens and the earth. In the heavens, I'm not talking about the clouds, I'm talking about the creator of the world, the spiritual world. In the earth is the physical world that we belong to. The month of Elul, it has the power of connecting the spiritual and the physical. How are we connected to the spiritual world? Through the ten spirot, through the ten emanations. That for us, when we're talking about the ten spirot, we're talking, okay, the first spira, Keter, then Chochma, Bina, Dat, we, we say fancy names, and we talked about it so many times during the Omer that we're saying, Netzach Shebehod, and and Gvura Shebechesed, and we throw all these fancy terms into the, to the universe, which the reality, we don't even know what it means. Everybody's like, wow, today, did you hear? Today is Netzach Shebenetzach, wow! What does it mean? I have no idea. So even if we try to interpret it, and we don't know what even what it means. It's way beyond our capability to really understand what does it mean that these two sfirot, these two emanations are combined together. But we do like throwing fancy words into the universe. The reality is that we don't really know what it means and we will not know what it means till Mashiach comes, till we can actually see it. I can now explain to you for three hours what it means, Netzach. It doesn't mean that I or anybody else knows what it means. And, and how does it look and what does it really do and what is its character traits of that Sfira. But we do know that it all chains down what's called Mishtal Shel from a spiritual world and the chain that connects me from the spiritual to the physical is this descending chain, what's called Seder Ishtal Shelut, from all the ten emanations. So the month of Elul, that the two letters that represent the month is Yud and Reish. Yud corresponds to the ten Sfirot. The Reish is the, the power of the planet Kochav that, I, like I told you, when you break it, you have the First part of the letter, the, the word is 26, Kaf Vav. The second part of the letter is Kaf Bet, 22. It hints to us that the power of Elul is the connection between the spiritual and the physical, which basically means bringing me back again to my source. Now, when I need to concentrate on what can be achieved in the month of Elul, is I have the ability of making a U-turn and going back to my source. When you are lost, you know, so there's a, a, a natural thing is when you're lost, you don't admit when you're lost. And sometimes you're going on a road trip and you know that you lost and your wife or in your case your husband will say, honey, I think you were lost. No, no, no. Uh -huh. I, I have it under control. I know where we are. No, but I think we're going in circles. No, 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 no. Everything, I know where I am. When a person is lost, it's very hard for them to admit that they're lost. It's going to be embarrassing. Why were you late? Oh, no. Uh, it was traffic. No, it just said you lost. You couldn't find the place. So now we blame it on the GPS. Ah, the GPS doesn't know where it's taking me even. It's 
So when somebody's lost, he needs to stop and say, okay, let me, let me see where I got lost and let me see how I'm turning back to where I started. And if I go back to where I started, I'll, I'll reroute myself. So the same way that most people are embarrassed to say I was lost, so I am lost, we have to reach to the realization, you know, I'm lost. Sorry to say that. I don't even know where I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm heading somewhere, I don't know where. So the month of Elul, we need to say I'm lost. I, I need to make a U-turn to go back. So that's one part that we need to take from the month. Another part is, well, I always mention that there are 12 senses to the month and the sense of the month of Elul is the sense that is called Maase, action, doing. We mentioned last month was the sense of seeing, previous months the sense of hearing, previous months the sense of speaking. So the, the sense, what's called Chush, of the month of Elul is the chush, is the sense that is called asiyah, maaseh, action, to do something. Now we know that there are four spiritual worlds. We actually know of more spiritual worlds, but we concentrate on four spiritual worlds. Atzilut, Bria, Yetzira, and Asiyah. And Atzilut is way beyond our understanding. So if we focus on the other three worlds, we have the world of Bria, which is the world of creation. What signifies is the world of Bria, creating something from nothing. What is called yesh me'ayin, say taking a nothing and creating a something. Olam HaTzilut is nothing. There's a, 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 a spiritual world, a void. But the next world after that, the world of creation, is taking something, nothing, and making a something out of it. It's called Bria, yesh me'ayin. The next world is Olam HaYetzira, the world of formation. What is, signifies the world of formation? Changing the form. In Hebrew it's called Olam Yetzira, the world of formation. Many people mistake the word Yetzira is to create, because in Hebrew Litzo is to create, meaning Yetzira is a creation. Yetzira comes from the Hebrew word Tzura, shape. This is the world, the spiritual world that everything gets a shape. In the world of Bria, there's no shapes. We recognize everything by shapes. You, uh, by, okay, we recognize things by maybe their names. <laughs> but everything in this world has a shape. So what forms this world is that it has shapes. If everything will be here equal, we wouldn't be able to tell the difference between one thing to the other. So how can I tell the difference between person A and person B? Because they look different. Their shape is completely different. That's how you test actually the intelligence of a child. You put different shapes and different colors. That's why the toys of kids always have different colors and they have different shapes. That the kid can start making a difference. This is a square, this is a triangle, this is blue, this is red. So Olama Yetzira is taking the shape and changing it. That's, that's what he does. He's taking what Olama Bria created and now putting a shape into it. I can now take clay and shape it however I want. I can make a bowl out of it, I can make a bowl out of it, I can make whatever I want. That's taking the material and, and changing it. This is what represents Olama Yetzira, the world of formation, that I can change the shape every day, something different. But then comes the world of Olama Asiya, the lowest of all, which we are in Olama Asiya, but in the physical Olama Asiya, not in the spiritual Olama Asiya. And this world is basically to improving what was created. What's called in Hebrew Shipur, to make it better, and Shichlul. Shichlul is improvement. And this is called Olama Bria. Hashem created the world, nothing. He took nothing and made something. Then he made it a shape, like, a, uh, you know, you go to, a, to a, a workshop where you do work on clay. They give you a block of clay. Now do something with it. So Hashem gives us the material. He gives us the original shape. He says, now you create something. My daughter just the other day went to some place where you uh, create uh, uh, something from clay, um, ceramics. I'm sure there's a word for it in English. In Hebrew, they have a word for that. 
But you know, they give you a block of clay and the thing starts turning around, you put some water and you start uh, redoing it. You go like this, will be wider, you'll go like that, we'll get a shape, you'll put your finger, we'll make a, a, a line. That's all I'm asiyah. Hashem created it, Hashem gave us the material, now, now you improve it, now shape it. This is basically what you have to do here, is to improve what Hashem created. The hint to that is we see the verse that, cre that completes the creation is Asher bara elokim la'asot. We read it in, uh, in Kiddush. But we say Yom HaShishi ve'yechul ha'shemayim ba'aretz ve'chol tzfa'am. On the sixth day, the, the creation stopped. But the last sentence that we read in the creation of the world is Asher bara elokim la'asot. That he created to do. What does it mean? Hashem bara, Hashem created. And for us, lasot, for us to change, to, to reshape it, so to say. So the sense of the month of Elul is asiya, is to be able to change from one uh, form to the other. That's the power of asiya, of doing. That I take one form and I redo it, I change it, I re reform it. Or better to say improve it. Reforming is not the right word. I would rather use the word improving it. So we have two situations. The present situation. And I want to change it. I want to change it to, or uh, again, I'll use the word improving it. Right now I have a situation. I can look at myself. This is the situation. I know where I'm holding. I know what I need to improve. I know where I'm, I'm wrong. I want to take now where I am and improve it. And that's the sense of the month of Elul, that I have the ability of actually improving where I am. So, and this is a very human sense, because Bria, creation, I can't do. I have nothing to do, no partnership in creation. I can't create anything. That's only, a, only God can create. Formation. I can't really form something out of nothing. Maybe today with a little bit of science I can start forming things, but still I'm not creating it. So create, creating and forming, it's not really in my ability. Doing, that's my ability. That's a, a, a human character trait. So we understand that Hashem created the world in order for me to improve it. Asher barai lokim la'asot. Now, what does it mean, lasot? To do, it means to improve, to fix. Right now, I can look at myself, and I, if I'm a little bit humble, then I can say, you know what, I'm very not happy with how I uh, behave with other people. I need to be a little bit more softer with people, maybe a little bit less vulgar, maybe less, less hurtful, maybe a little bit more polite. So I'm looking at the situation where I am, and I'm seeing what I need to improve. I need to scream less, I need to react uh, nicer. I'm just giving you an example in one, one department. So you, I told you that once a month we have a family meeting. And the family meeting is, I'm the chairman of the meeting, I'm the father, then my wife is the vice president, and then six kids. So we have a family meeting, we sit all together in a form of a square or a circle. And everyone in, in their turn says what they like and what they don't like. And about each and every one. And this is everything, the cards are on the table. So even my uh, four-year-old, even the six-year-old, they will say, I like it when you do this, I don't like it when you do that. And, and so we have a family meeting and everybody says what they like and what they don't like. So. Same thing here. I have to make a meeting with myself. I have 30 days to make a meeting. And I have to tell myself what I like and what I don't like. And I can say to myself, I like it that I'm waking up early every day and I go and pray or I do something productive. Or I can say to myself, I don't like it that I lie or that I cheat or that I sell a shonara, whatever it is. I have to make my, my, a meeting with myself. This is the power of the sense of doing. And that is dominating in the month of Elul. So doing is, one can say, to correct, la'asot, letaken. Now, 
one can look at the month of Elul as the end of the year and you know the end is uh, can signify something negative you go on a trip and the last day of the trip is uh, the trip is over last day of summer vacation uh, it's the last day so the end is can signify something negative so a lot of people say oh Elul is the end of the year it's might look as it is a negative thing but you know every end has a new beginning and one should look at the lul as not the end of the year rather the new beginning what I can achieve and to conclude I always mention that the every month has a connection to one of the tribes and the tribe represents another character trait the month the the tribe that's is connected to the month of Elul is the tribe that is called Gad. Gad in Hebrew is a equivalent word to the word Mazal, luck. If you have the, the, the zchut of reading Kriyat Shema Lamita every day, and if you follow the Nosach of the Ariya Kadosh, we mention a certain verse three times. Gad, Gedud, Yegudenu, Vahu Yakud Akev, So God is also the word in Hebrew mazal. Now, what is mazal? We spoke about it uh, in the weekly parasha class on Sunday. Do we believe in mazal? Is it something Jewish even to say that I have luck? After all, we say in every event, mazal tov. So yes, there is something in Judaism that is called mazal. And this is not going to the to the casino and I have good luck. That's not the luck we're talking about. Rather luck, mazal, comes from the word in Aramaic, nazil, something that drips, something that drips from above to below. So mazal is a very deep part of the essence of my soul. Like the atom of my soul is my luck. And I can change my luck. We talked about it in the class on Sunday. I can actually control my mazal. I'll do something good. I'll do a charitable act. I will change my muzzle, as they say. I will uh, uh, give charity. I will really work on myself spiritually, uh, emotionally. I will change my mazal. <coughs> so mazal is a very hidden piece of my soul. And again, God is another way, another word of saying mazal. Now, what is this hidden piece of my soul? There is a concept taught in Kabbalah that the word is called Ein. Ein is from where? Or, where, or something that is hidden. So this hidden piece of the soul, this mazal, comes from Ein, from a very, very deep, concealed, hidden part of my soul. Now, we know that there's a, a teachings from Chazal, from our sages, that they say, "En lecha esev she'en lo mazal mi lemala she'omer lo gdal." Our sages explain that you do, there in everything in this world has a mazal, and the example that our sages give, "En lecha esev," means even a little leaf of grass has a mazal, has a certain energy that tells him grow. Meaning every leaf, you're looking now at a football stadium. Can you imagine how many leaves of grass are there? 100,000, a million, how many leaves of grass? Go to a big park and you have grass, sheets of grass. Can you imagine how many trillions pieces of grass are there? Our sages teach us that every leaf has an angel, a muzzle that tells him Gdal grow so much more so for every animal so much more so for anything look now at a tree a tree has a hundred thousand leaves five hundred thousand leaves every leaf has a, 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 a one angel a muzzle that tells him to grow now if you're looking at the word the last word of this uh, uh, verse gdal grow move the lamed it's the word god that's that mazal that power that allows everything to grow 
Now, the connection between the tribe of God and the action of God, which we said Mazal, and to the month of Tikkun, the month of fixing, is that in order for me to reach a Tikkun, to a completion, to a place where I can correct something or to bring it back to its source, is only if I have a connection with that hidden piece of my soul. If I want to make a, con a, a, a correction, I want to reach to a tikkun, a tshuva, a rectify, if improving, to make something better, that can only be done when I will reach the essence of my soul, this ein, and pull it out, and that's what's going to assist me to reach that. And that's the connection between the month of Elul and the, the, month, the, the tribe of God. Now, we see a beautiful hint is that the sign of the month of Elul is Virgo. Virgo in Hebrew is Betula. And Betula is a virgin, a, a woman that is still innocent. And the month of Elul, that's the, the, the sign of it, the sign of innocence. And not only innocence, of, 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 of before the start, so to say. In Hebrew it's called Rishonut, how it started. Once the woman gets married, that's it. She's not innocent anymore. She can't be called a virgin anymore. So the sign of the month is innocence. is bringing me back to my source. And the month has the power of bringing me back to the part in me that is tamim, the innocent part in me. When I was a little kid, I didn't have sins, I didn't lie, I didn't cheat, I didn't steal, I didn't say Lashon I didn't judge other people, I didn't go and, and cheat in business, I didn't do all these sins when I was a child. I'm not talking about a seven-year-old that you know, one can say seven-year-old, they cheat and they lie. I'm talking when I was literally a baby, when I was in the levels of my innocence. So Elul is able, has the power to bring me back to that level, a place where there's no pgam, when there's no damage. Throughout my life, I damage things. I damage em emotions, I damage my character traits, I damage even things in uh, sins. And then I find myself when I'm 20, 30, 40, 60, now let me start improving everything, let me, let me redo it, let me fix it. So the month of Elul has many different powers, and one should take advantage of that because we're going to learn Bezrat Hashem in the next class what I really need to take advantage of the month of Elul. And one of the things is to know that I need these 30 days. I can't use 15 days or, or 12 days, whatever it is. I need the full 30 days of Elul. Elul has only 29 days, but today is Rosh Chodesh Elul is Lamed Elul, Lamed Av. So we're adding that. So we have full 30 days. Every day of these 30 days, I need them. <clears throat> I need every day here. I can't benefit the exact same thing if I use only 28 days. That's the problem of a lot of people is comes the, the, the second week of Elul, the third week, oh my gosh, I didn't do anything, it's Elul. Okay, let me start now. Now, even though Elul represents that it's never too late, but now I have an opportunity. I have 30 days to uh, take advantage of every day of this month to rectify the past, to improve everything to the future, to really observe in me and to reach to the point of Emet. I started the class by saying is that the concept of tshuva is to return, to make a youth and where to my truth. And the problem is that what stops me from doing tshuva is the wall of lie. And I need to know how to penetrate through this wall of lie to the truth, to be able to sit and say, I'm lost. I got lost, I have to make a U-turn. And that's the power of vidui, admitting. That's why in Elul we say slichot. Some have the custom that they say the entire month of Elul slichot. Some say in the last week of Elul, each one with their own custom. But we say slichot, and what do we say in slichot? Every couple paragraphs we say vidui, we're admitting. So the whole point is for me, to, in order for me to reach to that hidden level of my neshama to be able to, re to improve it, to fix it, I have to remove the, the wall of deception, the wall of a lie. And that's coming to my essence, to my emet, 
to be able to say, okay, this is where I'm bad at. If I want to improve something, I need to really be honest and say where it's bad. If I want to come now and make my spouse or my students or anyone better, and I will have to tell them the truth. Listen, I'm sorry, the truth hurts, but you're lazy. And I'm sorry to tell you, but you're a liar. You're, you're not you, I'm just saying, if I want to help somebody, I can come and tell them, oh, you are perfect. You are an amazing human being. You have nothing to work on. That's not going to help that person. If I want to help a person that lies, I have to come and tell them, I'm sorry to tell you, you lie a lot and everybody sees that. And you should change that. Or you cheat, or you exaggerate, or you, you're very angry. So we have to do that to ourselves. Imagine now you're going to go to a person and tell them you're a liar. You will get upset. You go to a person and tell them you have a problem with anger or you, whatever it is, they'll get upset. Why are you telling me that? Very few people will be able to accept the rebuke. So we have to rebuke ourselves and say, hey, listen, who am I kidding? I'm lazy, I'm this, I'm judgmental, I, I, I have anger, I'm easy to, to, to react. And that's how I reach my tikkun. And Elul has all the tools to bring me to that place to be able to take me to a much better beginning. It's not that one should not look at himself and say, oh, I'm so bad, there's no hope. Rather say, okay, next year I want to be better. We're going to talk about it in the next class, but just to mention that w there is a spiritual state that is called shena, sleeping. What happens when you sleep? You don't have your powers. You don't eat, you don't see, you can't talk, you can't move. You are, so to say, paralyzed. And then when you wake up, you wake up from the state and you start moving. So in the spiritual world, there is the state of sleeping. And we all are in some type of a level of sleeping. And even if you are very high level in the spiritual world, you're still sleeping, so to say, in comparison to the level above you. Even Moshe Rabbeinu, even Avram Avinu, all the tzaddikim, they were sleeping in comparison to the level above them. In comparison to us, they weren't. So I have to understand that Elul is the end of the state of the sleeping where I am. Not the physical sleeping, rather the spiritual sleeping. And Tishrei, the next month, will be me going out of that level of sleeping to a much higher level. So one should not have the energy of saying, oh, I'm so bad, I did so many sins this year. Rather saying, where am I improving myself for the next year? And Elul is the turning point because it's the month before the beginning of the year. So the month of tshuva is not only to see how bad I was. That's also you need to make a review of where, where did I go wrong. But also saying how am I improving? I want to upgrade myself from, first, from regular, from economy class to business class. I want to upgrade my entire being. And in order for me to know how to upgrade myself is only by knowing where, where I did wrong. If I'm not able to look at myself and say, you know what, I wasn't so serious about my prayers this year. One time I made it to the minion, one time I didn't make it, one time I woke up, one time I didn't wake up, whatever. So if I want to improve myself, forget about rectifying the, what I did in the past. I want to improve myself. <laughs> yeah, I can only improve myself when I can recognize where I went wrong. And all this can be achieved in the month of Elul because I have all the, the elements in order to bring myself to focus on how I am bringing myself to this level of improvement so I will be able to be blessed with a beautiful new year. So Bezad Hashem, we have a very busy month, full 30 days to really take one step after the other to work on ourselves. A, to look back on what I need to rectify. And more important is to look forward and what can I change? And better to say, what can I improve? I want to make a much better version of me next year. And I can only do that while I'm taking the advantage of the 30 days to be able to look at all these elements that I just mentioned in the last hour, to put them all together into action and to make a roadmap, make a plan. What am I doing in the next month? To make sure that I'm able to reach the day of Rosh Hashanah and I already prepared myself for everything that you want a successful uh, 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 outcome. You need a preparation. You can't do something without a preparation. 
Anything that you want to do in life, especially when you want to be successful, has to have a pre preparation. So if I want to be successful on, Tish, on Aleph Tishrei, on Rosh Hashanah, I can't just come on Rosh Hashanah and say, hi, I came. No, I need 30 days to prepare. So I want to take advantage of that. You can, if you need to review all the information that we said, put it all together, make yourself a roadmap, make yourself a plan, and put it into action. Take the sense of action, the sense of doing, and you put it into action. And the thing is that we have a lot of help from above this month. The, our sages say, Habali ta'er mesainoto. A person who wants to come and, and purify himself, they help him from above. This is called Sayata Dishmaya, help from above. And in this month we have a lot of help from above. You just need to make the decisions, you just need to make the action, and Hashem will make it all happen. There's a, a, a big assistance. Now the king is in the field. This is the analogy that we have. The Hashem is out of his chamber. He takes off his garments of, of royalty and he goes out to the field to greet everybody. So Hashem is very close to us. It's very easy to make this change. Bezad Hashem, you should merit to have a beautiful, beautiful month, successful month full of achievements, that you can achieve all your goals and all your desires and plans and reach to the day of Rosh Hashanah where Hashem will bless you all with an unbelievable successful year of health and wealth and happiness and dreams should be achieved and the ultimate request and the ultimate dream is that this year we'll be celebrating the coming of Mashiach that this is the ultimate bracha that if we all do the right tshuva and the right effort in the month of Elul, we have the power of actually bringing it from the world above to the world below. So you should have a beautiful, successful month.